How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. Part 14. Carefully drilling the mounting holes for the first piece of cladding using my Proxon Micromot rechargeable drill on the stand. This is a delicate operation and must not be forced. Any excess pressure will deform the thin cladding steel and these holes need to be drilled in exactly the right place. With this job there is no margin of error whatsoever. You either drill the holes in the right place or you drill them in the wrong place and if you drill them in the wrong place you throw away the piece of cladding and start all over again. Why do I use this rather crude method of drilling the holes? Well it's simple, the Micromot drill is not as powerful as my main pillar drill so it's more likely to go where I want it to go rather than using the brute force that would be applied by a big pillar drill. And also the power of this Proxon drill is not really very much so it will not grab the work and spin it round and slash your fingers. It is altogether a very useful tool to have in the workshop. My only recommendation is to avoid the cheap mini drills. They're not so good. These Proxon ones do the job perfectly. Turning the piece of cladding around you can see that there are some burrs on the other side which need removing. I use a small one inch belt sander for this and here's the one that I recently bought for my second workshop. It works very well and removes all of the burrs with ease. You do need a very delicate touch for this entire job. In this clip I'm drilling the pilot hole where the exhaust outlet exits the cladding. Once I drilled the pilot hole I needed to enlarge it and I'm using this little tool. These are general purpose burrs and I bought a set of these that were very cheap indeed and they work beautifully. But you have to watch your fingers, they are very sharp. What I'm doing here is looking for the bolts to hold the cladding to the engine itself. And in this clip I'm using a 7BA tap to clean up the holes. These holes in the cladding are only just clearance size for the small machine screws that hold the cladding in place. I'm running a tap through to make sure that the holes are threaded deep enough in the casting and also to clean the edges of the cladding itself for any of the holes that may be microns out of alignment. This is a really delicate job and don't forget if you snap the tap off in the hole then you have a bit of a problem. And for that reason I'm being very careful not to snap the tap off in the hole. Very careful indeed. What you're actually watching is not the finished job. Once I've fitted all these bolts, I will take them out and remove the cladding. I'm going to be using some high temperature silicone sealant in the exhaust hole area to make sure that the exhaust does not leak to the inside of the cladding. Fitting these screws is very fiddly, they're made from brass so I can't just magnetise the screwdriver. I just balance the brass machine screws on the screwdriver and carefully put it in place. And once it's aligned with the thread in the casting, I screw it all the way in. I'll repeat the warning about not snapping off the tap. You really do need to be very, very careful. And also, you don't want to cross-thread the existing hole. It's a very delicate operation. It's worth doing this because it makes fitting the brass machine screws much easier and there's no chance of them being damaged by the edge of the steel cladding. One more to go on the left hand side. I'm not going to fit a machine screw at the right hand side because there really is no room for it, it's too close to the edge. What I'm doing here is using a Sharpie felt tip pen to cover up the light mark that I made with the edge of the scriber. Here's the last one and this is where I get nervous because if anything goes wrong it will go wrong in the final operation. So I'm being extra gentle with this particular job. There are actually two more holes to run the tap into that secure the exhaust flange to the cladding. So the same thing applies. Be very, very careful. First the bottom one and then the top one and the job is complete. I'm going to make some studs to fit in this hole but for the purposes of testing the fits I'm going to use a couple of bolts like this. The original studs that were fitted into these holes didn't fit very well at all 
and came loose as I tightened them up. So I'm going to make some longer ones, and that should be better. And also I'm going to fix them in place with Loctite 603. On to the next part of the job. This is completely wrong. What's happened here is a quarter by 40 fitting has been soft soldered into the exhaust flange. I'm going to modify this arrangement. But first I need to enlarge the holes in the flange. And believe it or not, in my smaller workshop I do not have a drill bit that's the right size. I do have a diamond burr which drills the hole very well, although the part does get a little bit hot. Once again these things are very cheap and useful to have in your box of tricks. The next job is to use my Proxon blowtorch to melt the soft solder and remove the quarter by 40 adapter. Overall the cladding job on this side is looking quite good, even though I say so myself. I've allowed a bit of tolerance on the cladding to allow for the curvature of the mounting lugs and I think it looks okay. Over now to the first job using my Myford ML7R in the small workshop. I'm machining the bottom of the exhaust manifold to make sure it's flat and here I'm drilling a hole through the centre which is a quarter of an inch in diameter into which I will silver solder a right angled elbow. But first using the whetstone I'm removing every trace of soft solder from the flange itself. After doing this I cleaned up the entire part using one of these rotary brushes. When cleaning up parts like this, these wheels don't last very long, but at least they get the part clean. The exhaust manifold is a very visible part of one of these engines, so it needs to be right. I'm also going to file away part of the inside so that it lines up with the hole in the casting a little bit better than it currently does. What I'm doing here is seeing how much pressure I need to apply to push the cladding into the right position. But the point is, this is a waste of time. Finally, when I've fitted both sides of the cladding, I will remove them to apply the sealant on the exhaust parts on both sides. Before applying the sealant, though, I will bend the sides so that when the fastening position, they're a closer fit to the casting. In the next episode, I'll be fitting the cladding at the other side, which is considerably more difficult than this side, owing to the amount of holes to be drilled. That's it for this episode, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.